Oops. <laughs> Oops. We, we did, did it, it again. Did you get scary? <laughs> Pretty curious too. The machine took my card. And there's a volcano over here. <laughs> Today we are headed outside of Kigali and up to the northern province. We're headed to Volcano National Park, which is where the very famous silverback gorillas are. So Rwanda is one of the highest densely populated countries in all of Africa. And yet even in the capital city, Kigali, there's agricultural areas right in the middle of the town, which makes it feel, even though it is densely populated, it still feels like there's breathing room. One thing that makes it really fun to drive through Kigali is all of the taxis. So the taxis here are mostly motorcycle taxis or bicycle taxis, and they are often carrying people or deliveries to bring to you. And you can see people carrying all sorts of incredible things on the back of a motorcycle I and a bicycle. a full baby crib being carried on a bicycle. It was assembled? Yes, assembled <laughs> like a full, a big one. Well, it's incredible. We saw somebody hauling what looked like 24 two by fours on a bicycle. And I, have, according to what I have seen, there is there no limit right to the here. number of bananas that you can carry on a bicycle. What makes the bicycle taxis <coughs> even more incredible here is that it is extremely hilly. Rwanda is known as the land of a thousand hills. So you're going up and down. I, I'm reading a book right now about Rwanda's cycling team and like, more than half the team used to be bicycle taxi drivers, which makes sense. I mean, they, they would get so strong with that, just going yeah. up and down. And we are staying in a very local bed and breakfast up there. It's called Kanigi Cottage, and we needed to pay with cash. And so yesterday, Jeremy went to get cash from the ATM machine, and what happened? The machine took my card, wouldn't give me money, and wouldn't return the card. It like sucked up the card, yeah. and it was gone. So Jeremy, called every number available and figured it out. But it took absolutely hours. I think it was like 8 p.m. last night that we got our card back. And so well, this morning he they went were to saying, get money. We can get it for you in a couple days. And it's like, we're leaving on a trip and we need the cash. An interesting thing with the money in Rwanda is the highest bill that they print is a 5,000 Rwandan franc which is about equal to five US dollars. So it felt crazy. We had to get a million Rwandan francs, which is about a thousand US dollars. We just wanted to make sure we had everything on hand we would need for this trip. Here's what it looks like. There we go. There's our stash of cash. Luckily Rwanda is a very safe place. So there's a cyclist in front of us and uh, I think he's breaking the speed limit. <laughs> All right, this is the Ellen DeGeneres campus. studying about Diane Fossey before coming here. She was one of the first people to come here to Rwanda to really study the gorillas. Before, people didn't think that gorillas could connect with humans, and she broke down those barriers and showed that she could sit and be and lay with the gorillas. She got to know them personally as though they were part of her family. One of the big problems they were having here was poaching, and the gorillas were gonna be heading into extinction. She created a fund and was very active in trying to prevent the poachers through her efforts and through many things that have happened over these last 30, 40 years, the gorillas have continued to grow in population and are moving away from extinction. It's really an amazing reminder of the impact that one person can have. They actually have a replica of what her home was like. You know, for the first many years, she was in a tent. This is the desk yeah, that like, she would sit in and these are like stuff that she wrote, wrote and then over here is... It's her real work. Each nose is unique. Diane Fossey used the unique pattern of wrinkles and creases on a mountain gorilla's nose to definitively identify each one. One of the cool things was she adopted two little baby gorillas that were found that had been abandoned and she raised them. She even turned her tent into a habitation for them to live. To gorillas skeletons. You guys can take the quiz to see which gorilla your personality most matches. How old 
I think that's an energetic and carefree youngster of the group. Well, Janae's love of animals definitely makes me think of Diane Fossey. Which gorilla were you? I got Digit. Yeah, Digit was Diane Fossey's favorite gorilla. So what's so sad is Digit was her favorite one, and then he was killed by poachers. It was really tragic. I got Can't Speak. Who was like the most successful leader, father, leader. chief, yeah. silverback of the group. <laughs> yeah, the longest time as the dominant silverback ever. Strong relationships. Janae got can't speak too. You got can't speak. Wait. You're a strong leader. Learn to speak like a gorilla. Gorillas communicate with one another both verbally and non verbally. Can you make the pig grunt? <laughs> Janae just did the noise and <laughs> she successfully did it. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, try again. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so the one that me and Laura got, McKeever, he's still alive. I yep. could see him tomorrow. Yeah, Isaac and I are going tomorrow to trek out in the jungle to find gorillas. From like the great grandfather. Yeah, well, come look. Look at the family trees. You can Whoa. see how it works. The different silverback dads with the different moms. This shows where all the different gorillas live here in Africa. And the mountain gorillas only live right here. Right in the here. Three countries. In Rwanda and some in Uganda and some in Congo. That's it. So this is the only place in the world for the mountain gorillas. We're gonna see a kind of gorilla that is not that you can't see in zoos. Yep. They're only out in the wild. All right, is this the virtual reality this is experience? Dangerous. Is it scary? <laughs> it's not that scary. <laughs> Just don't get out of it, okay? So this is an augmented reality of a gorilla trek. Was it like you were out there with the gorillas? Yeah, it was so scary at one point. Like it came so close. And... <laughs> <laughs> Caleb said, touch me while I'm doing it. I cut right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm touching it. I want to touch you. <laughs> That's so scary. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Right when the gorilla was attacking, I like come up and touch him. Your face was so good. You need to try that. Was it so good? Yeah. You touch me while I'm doing that. He won't. You're in trouble. Mom is just gonna be fun to watch during this thing. You guys all know what happens. <laughs> so, what do you think of that? That was fun. In here, you guys. This is the theater. So this is a 5,000 Rwandan franc, and I hadn't noticed there's a gorilla on it. Kids are getting some help figuring out a last few of the scavenger hunt problems. Aha, there it is. We finished them and they gave us these. Our safari guy had like stickers like this. So what's amazing about this virtual reality is it they tell such a compelling story. They tell how one of the males is challenging the alpha male of the group and even show a confrontation. So these are the poacher snares that are used. Often they're trying to catch antelope or other animals, but then when the gorilla gets caught in it, it tries to rip itself free and often loses its legs and dies. So in the Volcanoes National Park, 
there's several different volcanoes, but they span several different countries. We're here in Rwanda, and up here is Uganda, and over here is the Congo. This food looks amazing. So they have this really great cafe here called the Gorilla Grill, and it's a little chilly today. People are getting sweaters on. So Portia, Ellen DeGeneres' wife, surprised her with this place and this foundation, this funding of this, as a birthday present. And so we were talking while we were eating. If in the future we had unlimited means and we could donate to any cause, what would it be? And I'd love to know in the comments for you, what cause or charity or purpose you would be most interested in giving of your time and money to? I think I would really want to donate to the Celiac Disease Foundation because I have had celiac disease for so long and so I know what it's like. And if I gave like $30 million, it would help them try to find a cure and maybe even just find a replacement so that gluten free stuff could be more sticky and easier. Yeah, it was hard because we came here and we were having quesadillas and pasta and Caleb had soup, soup. <laughs> and some chips because that was all that we could get here. Yeah. Oh, you got some vegetables too. <laughs> so yeah, Celiac Disease Foundation makes a lot of sense. Um, either Feed My Starving Children or Days for Girls. Yeah, those are both really good causes. I would want to build epic, amazing libraries for children all over the world. I think I would want to make more vets in areas so our animals in Africa could be helped because they don't have as many like dogs and I think we should bring that to them so they can see what dogs are like and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, this is my favorite over here. You can see one of the ladies is carrying a gift basket on her head. There's a special kind of basket that has a pointed lid that goes on top of it. I forget the name of the basket, but it's used for gift giving. And even the design on the basket symbolizes the give and take of being in a community or going to a baby shower or maybe a wedding festivity. And so it's really fun to see that part of the culture. We're on our way to the cottage for the night. Oh, there's some baby sheep up in the front. Oh, they're adorable. The sheep are a little muddy. Hey, guys, look at the babies. <laughs> look how cute these little sheep are. Wait, listen. <laughs> <laughs> because we're near the volcanoes, the dirt here and the rock is black, I think. Oops. <laughs> Oops, we, we did, did it again. <laughs> and everyone's like, what are those English? Apparently our map app does not distinguish between walking paths and uh, driving paths. Hey, at least there was a place to turn around. So we considered getting a tour guide again for this experience here at Volcanoes National Park, but I'm glad we didn't because with a tour guide, you probably wouldn't get to get These lost. These experiences. Yeah, in the middle of the villages here. We got some quotes from tour companies for this adventure, and honestly, it was really, really expensive. So driving up here and doing it ourselves made it um, affordable. And we really wanted to make room for this once in a lifetime experience. Well, we did finally find the road yes. to the place we're staying. We're staying out here. And look at those views of the volcanoes. We found it, Kaniki Cottage. This is just beautiful. Hello. This is so beautiful. Oh, this is gorgeous. I love all the flowers out here. So pretty. Janae's loving the dogs. Kanigi Cottage. So please welcome to Ooh. Thank you. They painted it with Imagongo art I style. I love the style. Okay, it's lovely. Your kitchen. The living room and kitchen. Oh, I love it. Hello. Ooh, tree tomatoes. Oh, passion fruit. I love passion fruit. That will be good luck. Okay. So this is a volcano called Old Man's Teeth. And there's a volcano over here. Wow. Right, then there's another volcano back here where the sun is setting. So there's resorts here that are crazy expensive, like $4,000 a night. And we were looking at some that were nice, but they were still over $1,000 a night. This place was significantly cheaper. It's really small, so we're the only guests here. Like we rented out every room and they're making us dinner and breakfast and it was way cheaper 
than all the other places. We're feeling really happy about this. Ooh, do they have robes for you? They have robes and flip-flops and towels. <laughs> <laughs> all right, they're making a fire out here. <laughs> Trying to make a fire. Oh, this is gonna work really well. You got dry wood, you got good kindling, some paper in here. This is gonna light right up. These flowers are unbelievable. This reminds me and of we home had kind of because of how many plants there are. The oh, tropical yeah. rainforest mm -hmm. part. Yeah, this is your candle. Very Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. But it's a little cooler here. I don't know if Puerto Rico ever gets this chilly. I like the weather. I like cold weather. Yeah. Like this is warm fire. Cold weather, like 65 degrees. <laughs> so this cottage, Kanigi Cottage, is just five months old as a bed and breakfast. It's beautiful. These gardens, they're all just five yeah. months old. They've been really cultivating it. It's hard with reviews because you really have to build those up over time. And they already have really great reviews. They had some passion fruit here and Isaac Loves this stuff. Jenny's learning how to play an authentic Rwandan instrument. He found the drums. <laughs> what a great song. Yeah, it's leather. I'm so excited. Can I let one too? Wow. So what's the song you're singing? Oh, it's called Love Animals. Hmm, what's it about? It's about don't be scared of wow. animals. Animals don't be scared of us. Oh, okay. Oh, Good job, where can Elise. this one go? We had no idea that there was traditional Rwandan drums and dancing, but we're excited. wants popcorn yeah yeah those are the baskets we talked about oh the gifts the gift bag And also, you see our materials we have. With the dancing at first, I was a little bit nervous, but then I just decided to do it and not really care if I messed up. <laughs> That's the secret to dancing. Oh my goodness, this dinner's looking amazing. We're starting with some soup. What kind of soup did you say? 
pumpkin soup. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can we eat beautiful. the flour? Sure. <laughs> if you want. It's made out of ball. Oh, that's so smart. <gasps> so it's just like, that's insane. So it's a it bottle cap really hot pad? <laughs> that is really so, cool. Yeah, this is a Rwandan berry, and it tastes really unique. It's like grape and cherry got married and they had a baby. And then that baby married a cherry tomato, and they had a baby. And it popped out like this. Mm. I like it. That's what it's <laughs> okay. So we just heard the name of it. So apparently these are called Cape Gooseberries. I like them. Good night. Do you have salt? It's called Imagongo Art, and it uses a very interesting ingredient. 50% cow dung, 50% ash. Ash. I did. Yeah. <laughs>